the topic is aloneness. When you think about aloneness, what do you think? People hardly think about such topics. When you think about aloneness, you are left alone. You are in isolation. There is nothing to do. There is no friends. You are lonely. Matter of fact, that is a wrong idea. The reality is that we have to face that we are alone. We were alone when we were born. We will be alone when we die. We are alone when we are hungry. We are alone when we are in pain. We are alone when we are dreaming. And still we are in illusion. I have friends, I have someone. You can do nothing for anyone. No one can do anything for you. This looks very harsh. But once you accept it, it removes all the burdens from your life. Also, when you learn to be alone, you learn to transform your life. You become truly free. We are like robots. We believe what we are told. So everyone agrees, no one can do anything for us and we can do nothing for anyone else. What can others do? They can only guide us. They can provide the food, but we have to eat and digest it. Same way it goes for philosophy. One can give you philosophy, one can give you idea, but unless you absorb yourself, it means nothing. So think about, as you are going through the session, let it be the process of transformation. Try to be alone and feel the freedom. Freedom from what? What is aloneness? So I give you the new way of looking at it. What is aloneness? So there is no time to talk back and forth. What is aloneness? We are one with God. This is the standard chart I have everywhere. God or supreme consciousness is omnipresent, omnipotent, omniscient. Its nature is Sat, Chit and Anand and reflects within us, within everyone, all the living creatures, is called Atman. So Brahman is everywhere and deep within us is the same Supreme Consciousness in a miniature form. Qualitatively, we are same like Supreme Self. Aloneness really refers to be one with ourself. So what are the problem of aloneness? We are covered up with many layers. That is the burden. The first burden is I consciousness, feeling that I'm separate from the whole. I'm separate from others. That produces burden. All the burdens come from duality. I and you my nation and your nation, my religion and your religion. Just consider, it goes at the personal level, family level, national level, at all the levels. Then we have layer of intellect, the judgmental faculty. Then comes mind, thinking faculty. Then comes senses, 
sense organs, motor organs, and we use our internal faculty that is called antahkarana. Internal faculty is made up of four things, mind, intellect, eye consciousness, and unconscious mind. Manaha, buddhi, ahankar, and chitta. We use all four of them to experience the world. We experience the world by using five senses. Five senses, they go out. Each sense has sense organ. Eyes have different sense organ, ears have eyes, ears, tongue, all the food, skin has all the touches, and the nose has a smell. All these sense organs with their sense objects, then we get perception, we get cognized, we feel the emotions, and we have memories. So imagine just one experience and we are bombarded with all four things. Our mind goes outside. That is what produces burden. So aloneness refers to be quiet and go within yourself. Okay. Going within yourself. If you want to find peace, what do you do? You feel alone. So you think, let me go out, talk to a friend, go to a party, have loud music. What are you doing in reality? Loud music, talking to friend. All you are doing is going outward. And more you go outward, you are draining energy. In illusion, we feel, we feel better with more association, but all the association takes us away from our inner self. This is called aloneness. So this is never taught. People never think about being alone. There is something wrong with you, you don't go out. This is how they say it. I want to show it from the standpoint of scriptures In Bhagavad Gita, the sec second chapter, Lord Krishna explains aloneness. What is aloneness? The second chapter, which is potent textbook of yoga. I studied in childhood and all those slokas has made deep impact on me. I memorized them because it had so much essence. <laughs> Arjuna asked Krishna, what are the character who has found peace, who is sthita pragna, who has maintained mental equilibrium? And Krishna explains, that is the real essence of all the teaching. So, Bhagavad Gita has 18 chapters and all these are verses you can sing like poetry. Okay, the meaning is Prajahati Yada Kaman Sarvan Parthamanogata. When one abandons all the cravings of the mind and Prajahati Sarvan Atmani Atmanatusta. Being content by Atman 
with the Atman. So that is difficult. So be happy being one with yourself. That is the basic teaching. And means being alone, stability of mind, samatha, mental equilibrium, peace of mind, anything you call. All it takes is withdrawing the mind from desire. What does it involve? All the desires come from the contact with the senses. In Bhagavad Gita, this describes Jayato Visayan Kunsaha Sangaste Sopajayate Sangat Sanjayate Kama Kama No Do Vijayate Rodhat Bhavati Sammoha Sammoha explains the chain reaction. Six basic enemies of spiritual life. One says, by thinking about sense object, one has desire from it. That is first. Dhyayato Kama means desire is born. Kamad krodopi jayate. Any desire not not fulfilled will create anger. So kama krod loba means greed. You have desire, you want more. No mother, you have so much more, you are proud. Then comes moha means attachment. Then comes matsar means anyone is your competition. You have hatred for them. Kama, Krodha, Lobha, Madha, Moha, Matsara. So this is what happened. Six enemies. Any desire ultimately not fulfilled produces anger. Okay. So going further into it, I bring out the teaching of Patanjali, which is the basic essence of his teaching. It is called Patanjali Yoga Sutra, written 200 BC. It was known thousands of years before. He wrote 185 sutras. Sutra means thread, short sentences. The second and third one. First one, Athatu Yoganu Sash. That is just general introduction. Second one, yoga chitta vrutti nirodha. I wrote in the latest book about chitta vrutti. Yoga is removing mental waves. Third one is tada drishtuhu swarupe avasthanam. Same thing like Lord Krishna says, at that time, Drushtuhu means observer merges in own nature. That is the essence of all the meditation, all the disciplines, all the teaching. That means be introverted, be connected with yourself and you experience bliss. Why to get connected with ourself? Because deep within us, the basic nature is Sat means eternal existence, immor immortality. Chitta means knowledge. Everything is known within. And anand means reservoir of peace, bliss. Everything is illusion. Seems like coming from outside, but we become introverted. So these are the two main things, teaching of Krishna, teaching of Patanjali. Later on, all the verses he teaches, yoga position, breathing, meditation, all these things, ultimately is to control mental waves. What do we use for controlling the mental waves? We usually use the technique of breath. Through breath, we connect with prana. With prana, we connect with mind. 
with mind we connect with consciousness and with consciousness we go into the source this is the lifetime of practice okay so this is the explanation of being alone so in all the books i say be alone make friendship with yourself all it refers to is remove all the distraction you have idea that there is happiness outside is only illusion all our life we waste time outside pampering our senses pampering our mind so they say four things we accomplish in life four things are i have in the books you have to study properly earth kama dharma and moksha earth means wealth in life we earn wealth that is necessary because it helps us now and second thing is kama means pleasure so get wealth and get pleasure wealth and pleasure will give temporary happiness it won't give long lasting happiness even in this life other two thing is dharma and moksha dharma means moral living and moksha is efforts for liberation dharma is moral living if you live morally even if you are poor you don't have enough supply of things you will be happy if you live immorally you are a billionaire you have name fame power everything you will be miserable in this life and at the time of death you leave everything behind any effort for moksha or liberation any effort to know higher self will give you peace here whatever you do meditation breathing anything you do in that life this life you will find peace and also everything we have earned will be carried on because our body dies but our mind doesn't die that means our sanskaras carry on and determines our new life in a young fresh body so we continue our journey so we travel from one life to another life to fulfill our goal to meet god okay so i will end this